Tesla, my Tesla. Tesla has been the talk of the town all week, folks. And why is this? Well, Tesla earnings came out. The stock tanked 10% after the earnings came out. And so everybody and their grandma's talking about Tesla stock and has an opinion on Tesla stock. Bulls, bears, everybody in between, okay? So, uh... Two videos to react to in this one, uh, both Tesla related. First one up here is a chart master. And what could happen here with Tesla stock? We'll hear what his perspective is, what he thinks about to happen with Tesla stock. You know, some people see, oh my gosh, Tesla stock will go down more. They get excited. They say, okay, awesome. I could buy shares for cheaper. Some people are like, oh my gosh, no, I can't have my Tesla shares go go down. Uh, depends on what, what side of the fence you're on, I guess you can say when it comes to that. Then we're going to listen to some Tesla investors who are not happy with Elon Musk right now and uh, i want to sh kind of share some perspective in regards to this and hear what they have to say in regards to that now before we get into that wor it's worth mentioning okay tesla stock price year to date is up 52 percent 52 percent year to date on a five-year basis uh tesla stocks up 742 percent and all time tesla stocks up over ten thousand percent I think just about everybody and their grandma who's been an investor at Tesla stock for a long time and is very happy with the job Elon Musk has done and the team at Tesla, right? I think the only people that aren't probably happy are short sellers. <laughs> and the second group is people that bought this stock at, let's call it the... Um, you know, let's call it 2021. The 2021 crowd that bought this stock in 2021 when the stock was, you know, trading at a trillion plus dollar market cap. Uh, that's not Elon Musk's fault. That's not Tesla's fault. That's because people didn't know how to value stocks correctly, okay? If you were buying Tesla at a trillion plus dollar market cap in 2021, when we had rates at zero, where we already was clear that inflation was going up, you just don't know how to value stocks, right? And a lot of us Tesla investors who had been investors of stock pulled back big time. We either sold shares or we just held through, right? As somebody like myself, I sold a lot of shares because the stock got way overvalued in the short term. Can Tesla get back to a trillion dollar market cap or even a multi-trillion dollar market cap over the next five, 10 years? For sure. That's a possibility. But at that given moment, the stock had ran way too much, way too fast. And Tesla stock is famous for doing this. It did this in the past. You know, 2011 through 2014, it ran way too much, way too fast. And then the stock did nothing for like six years, five, six years. I don't know if this time will be as long in terms of doing nothing. I think this stock's probably going to get back on the right track probably at the end of this year. I mean, you can make an argument that it's already getting back on the right track, right? Up 52% year to date, you can make an argument that the stock's already getting back on the right track. Never mind where it's going to be heading, you know, obviously next year and in future years. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, I appreciate everybody joining me. Thanks for being subscribed here. 20, oh gosh, I mean, the, the subscribers are going up so fast. I don't even know what we're at now. 25,800 subscribers, maybe? Something like that. So I appreciate everybody that subscribed to the channel. Also, everybody in the Patreon squad, I made my moves in there today. I posted those up uh, a few hours ago. That's going to be the pinned comment down there if you want to join us in the Patreon squad. And just so you guys know, if you want to join Patreon, I would do it ASAP because I'm going to be getting rid of this $10 tier here soon. And the people that are in that tier will be grandfathered in. If you're not in it, then, you know, whenever you join in the future, you'll have to join at this tier because I'm going to end up just keeping this tier here, the $19 one. Just so you're aware, if you're interested, I'll be pinned comment down there. All right, let's get into it. 11% after a big margin miss. Now there are new concerns from investors worried that Musk is stretched too thin, not paying enough attention to the automaker. So can the stock find its footing? Let's bring in the chart master, the one and only Carter Worth of Worth Charting here at the NASDAQ. Carter. Well, it was a bit of a tumble. And of course, it's the reciprocal or the equal and opposite action from the prior quarter. That gap up on the 26th of January, uh, euphoria, and this is the exact opposite. All I can think of here is like kind of what's the point of buying into Tesla when you've just had a setback like this? You know that for the past two months, people have been purchasing the stock basically between 180 and 210. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting here at 165, which is to say, let's say it never goes lower. It's just so difficult to go higher. You've got money that's trapped that would love to come out of the bets that were made. Forget about bets from a year ago or two, but just have recently committed capital, and it's immediately wrong. We've all been in a situation, and usually first loss, best loss, you want to get out. I think Tesla's sort of a dull duck here. The downside... Okay, this gentleman clearly does not understand Tesla's investor base. Not even remotely close. <laughs> like, he just missed the ball. What he just described there... That's fine for like 95% of stocks in the stock market. 98% of stocks in the stock market. He's, he's right in terms of that. He's talking about Tesla stock. That's a different bunch, okay? The, you know, folks that are Tesla investors don't care 
If this, they're not like, oh my gosh, I bought it 180, so you know, ooh, I think I gotta sell it 160 or when, when it goes back to 180 or something like that. Like the Tesla investors is just is a different group, right? I mean, people are investing in Tesla because they believe this is going to a five trillion dollar market cap. Kathy Wood just talked about that. We reacted to that on this channel. I think it was a day or two ago, right? She, she believes this stock's going to five trillion dollars by 2027. That's the type of investor base. Now you could say those people are right or they're wrong, they're delusional, whatever you want to say, okay? But the bottom line is there's massive amounts of people that believe this is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market cap within the next few years. And if that's the situation, there's insane returns ahead over the next few years if that plays out, right? And so those type of people aren't selling the stock. If anything, they're going to continue to be buyers and buyers and buyers, right? And we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, a lot of us that, you know, have been Tesla bulls, we've been right, right, in terms of that insane move. And now people are prepping up for the next major move. So, you know, I just think he just totally missed it on a lack of understanding of what Tesla's investor base is versus other stocks. Is to that 146 gap from the January earnings. 146. I, I know that you are an avid watcher of the show in general, Carter, so I'm wondering what you think of Dan Nathan's price target, which is like 60-something bucks a share. I is mean, it, is, no, is there... Is it? Yeah. Six zero? Six. Six zero. I'm surprised it's that high. If you heard Dan Nathan talk about Tesla, you'd think it's a $10 stock. I mean, holy smokes, that guy's no joke. He, uh... I won't go any further. Something, yeah, 65, well, 69. let's say it this way. The path is 60, passes through 145. I mean, right. <laughs> got, 60, that's tomorrow's lunch. That's I mean, way, is, that, is that like I another mean, support it's very hard to know. lower than 140? Uh, or? I mean, um, look, anything's possible. I think that's, uh, here's what I found is that when, just from over years, decades of publishing notes and clients, when you have something that's so outsized, they, you lose the audience. And not, to, not to say that Dan's audience is different than mine, but when I put out a note, a hedge fund manager, a pension plan, a family, they're like, come on, you think it's going to triple from here? You think it's, and, and, and so I, I try to have price targets that typically are where the imagination can allow. But listen, right. the imagination, maybe it's 60. <laughs> so let me ask you something. When you talk about given what's happened, is that just purely what's happened to the stock price as opposed to margins or? I'll tell you this, Tesla investors, that's like, their wildest dream is going this stock going to 60 because remember a lot of tesla investors believe this is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market cap if you're talking about going down to 60 dollars a share 60 dollars a share would put this market capitalization at oh gosh maybe like maybe like 200 billion like 200 billion ish and people believe this is going to be a multi-trillion dollar market cap within the next five years so you could do the math on that uh, for yourself, okay? So yeah, that's a that would be a dream come true for Tesla investors. I can tell you that the amount of call options people would be buying that are dated out two years, two year out leaps. Oh man, that would be a you gotta be flipping my flapjack situation. Cost cutting on cars, anything like it's just purely. Well, remember this is technicals of the stock. Well, the, this sell off right is the equal and opposite of what happened over the preceding two years. So you have a stock that no one believes in, and analysts. Price targets are below the stock, and the stock keeps going up and up and up, and let's keep revising their price targets. And then, of course, the stock turns down, and now analysts are lowering and lowering the prices. It's just exactly the opposite of what happened. A great uh, unknown that's now known, right? The highest multiples, and you know this as a, as a manager, are always assigned before you actually start to put up earnings. Once you put up earnings, then we can do our DCF. The biggest multiples ever are always on biotech or technology stocks that have never made a profit because it's all a dream. Once you start to actually make the cars, produce the earnings, have real margins, the things you're talking about, then you can't have dreams anymore. You've got you to gotta get real. So poetic. It That's is. Great isn't it? It's so sad. Yeah. I, I mean, quote worthy. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I'm curious what your take is on, on the quarter because there seems to be a real narrative change with this most recent earnings. They're, they're basically saying, you know, we're willing to fiddle around with price to, to boost sales. We're, we, we will do anything to price. We look at pricing every week. There are very few companies out there, particularly of, of big ticket items, that say we're going to look at pricing every single week and decide on that week what we're going to do with it. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I read something today that they tweaked uh, a couple of models a little bit higher, higher today yeah. after the move lower. So wow. it's kind of all over the place. So it's hard to project what the margin profile is going to look like. And I think that that is maybe part of what uh, investors. Guys, did you hear that? This is why this is one of the biggest potential bear traps out there, in my opinion. Because everybody's like, all oh, these bears are like, oh, yeah, you know, short this thing to the hill, you know, went down 10% on earnings and, you know, stocks up whatever amount this year and whatever, right? And they're like, oh, margins are going down, they lower price, right? Well, first off, they're, they're coming to false assumptions like, oh, Tesla has no demand. Really? They're taking 
epic market share right now. I'm not talking about EV market share. I'm talking about total vehicles. Their sales are going like this. Everybody else's sales are going like this right now, okay? So there's that going on. And then, like, this company looks at pricing every single week. The CFO said that on the conference call, which means, essentially, they could easily start raising price whenever they want. Let's say Fed starts lowering rates. You know, more more Tesla orders are coming in. Cybertruck gets into production. And they're like, oh, we can start going up in price. And next thing you know, margins going doot, 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 back up. You know, that's how you get into some epic bear traps here is assuming like whatever you're seeing in front of you is going to continue on. Oh, they, they drop price. This is just going to continue. Margins are going to keep going down. Oh, really? Things can switch very quickly in regards to that whole margin game. Struggling with right now in terms of the stock. But I ask myself, and obviously it's not an apples to apples comparison, but what are other car companies doing right now? Ford, GM, Toyota, they're all at the lows and they're all trading at seven times Ford and Tesla's trading at 40 times. Now, again, it, it, it shouldn't be trading at the same valuation, to be clear. But I think that that's an apt comparison in terms of where the stock can go. You know, I've been looking at similar levels to the upside at 206 to the downside at 155. I think it goes below 155. All bets are off. I think if it holds there, it can maybe drift to the top end of that range. But I think there's more risk to the downside here, just given some of those dynamics you're describing relative to prices and demand and margin. Like, I can't believe after all these years, they're still showing this crap. Like still like, oh, this P, you know, Tesla's PE versus their competitors. And I'm just like, uh, what are you guys doing? After all these years, you can't compare these companies. You know, the other companies are in decline. They're, they're going to be fighting for their life over the next few years. Tesla is on an ever-growing acceleration of gr revenue growth, profit growth, everything. And, um, you know, margins, if we can, that can be shaky, you know, quarter to quarter, year to year. But everything else is on the uptrend, right? And you, then you think about the, the, the storage business, the solar business. You think about the artificial intelligence business. You think about their services business. Like, you can't compare Tesla to these guys. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and it's been ridiculous for five years. Seven years they've been trying to do this, and I'm just like, they're still doing it? I'm like, come on, guys. Like, when are you going to learn, like, these aren't the same companies or even remotely close? You can't compare these companies. Just curious, how do the other automakers look on the charts? Just as described, uh, Ford, 52-week low, General Motors, Toyota. Now, that's not the case with Mercedes-Benz and BMW uh, uh, acting very well. Yeah, okay. By the way, whoever was arguing with me about canola oil in the Discord chat, uh, you know, tell me why this is evil, okay? Because like, then, then we can really have some fun in that one, okay? Next video up here. Tesla investors claim Elon Musk is too distracted. All righty, let's get into this one. Uh, hi, thanks for having us tonight. And so this is such an important topic because just like any other company, although this isn't like any other company, investors, we went in there for that battery play and the evolution of EV markets. And we need a CEO that's focused on that company um, with competitors coming up. You know, Tesla has been leading for so long. And yet with the distractions going on at that company, investors can't be assured that um, shareholders' minds um, and clients are, are in mind. <sighs> Where do I even start? Where where do I even flip and flap jack and start? Does she realize that Elon Musk does absolutely nothing to help make batteries or any of the technology? Elon Musk is basically a figurehead for Tesla that is one of the most amazing things with attracting incredible talent. This incredible talent is what does all the technology-related stuff. And they're the ones that are doing all the breakthroughs on Tesla and always have done all the breakthroughs. He is Elon Musk is a figurehead like Steve Jobs was. Steve Jobs wasn't in there making the iPod and like, I'm going to make the iPod here and I'm going to make the iPhone. He was just somebody that said, this is a vision. We need to get here, okay? That's exactly what Elon Musk does. And then he attracts the best of the best workers, right? No different than Steve Jobs had his Johnny Ive there. Elon Musk has this incredible team. And I mean incredible team, arguably the most talented workforce, especially in the engineering space, in the world. And if you want to look to the next, it's probably SpaceX, right? And so they have this incredible workforce that's always working on these problems, solving these problems, and that's why they're so far ahead of their competition. Why is Tesla five years plus ahead of competition? Because they got the most incredible employee force. But I tell you, it's not Elon Musk 
who's who's in there working on this and is like, mm, I'm going to figure out how to save 3% on the, the cost of a Model 3 by doing this. That's his workforce doing that, okay? He's just a leader that says, we need to do this next, do this next. And he's also got a lot of leaders underneath him now that are saying, we need to do this next. We need to go execute this. We need to continue to have the pedal to the metal. This company is consistently focused on bringing down the cost of the vehicles and consistently focused on, you know, how do we maximize how many vehicles we sell, right? Constantly, that that is their mission, right? No margins, although they, you know, are always focused on bringing down costs. But the real thing is they want to bring down costs because they want to scale to 5 million, 10 million plus vehicles a year. That's the main reason. It's not to optimize a margin. It's really so they can continue to obviously reach epic amounts of vehicles sold, which is obviously the trajectory. Dennis, I think you, just in the way that Dennis Neal does, I think you called some of these investors whiners. Yeah, they, you know, here's the thing. It's 17 investment groups or, or, or holders, $1.5 billion. Okay, that's a lot. Tesla's worth half a trillion more than that. So these investors own two one thousandths of one or two ten thousandths of a, two thousandths of a percent. I mean, they'd have to buy 500 as much as they own to get to 1%. But look at all the media that they're getting. And that's the real purpose of this pursuit here. Because the fact is, you don't like Tesla? Sell your stock, guys, okay? He is one of the most brilliant, amazing, innovative CEOs and entrepreneurs of our time, maybe of any time. And would we rein in Einstein? Would we rein in Mozart? Man, I don't want to rein in Tesla and, and him. If you don't like him, sell your stock. Let's understand, Brian, these are union uh, gr oriented groups. These are groups that you know pursue the typical I uh, agenda of LGBTQ rights and and That's climate a separate change issue. rights. Climate okay, rights. Dennis, I, you had so me. This is just activism. Dr. This Hull, is not about Tesla's value. Is this value. activism or is this about Tesla value? Doctor Hall, you there? Is, is this, this for about me? Yo, absolutely. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Well, so the, the stock price has gone down over 50% in the last year. So this is absolutely about value. Um, it's also about what is needed for our economy. And as you mentioned, Tesla, you know, this Ma'am, it is not Elon Musk's problem that you don't know how to value a company properly. And it's not Elon Musk's problem that, you know, we're in an extremely weak uh, market right now when it comes to home sales, when it comes to auto sales, things like that. It has nothing to do with Elon Musk and his focus on the company. You know, back it up over a five-year span, over a 10-year span, over even a three-year, four-year span. I mean, come on. CEO has stepped up in innovation, and how is he going to continue this and keep these getting to market? Um, he's going to need to out-innovate, and we're going to need his attention on the job. Okay, so these these critics, um, and, and Kristen does a very good job of speaking for them, and I'm happy to be here with her and with you, Brian. But let's understand they... They kind of cherry picked April to April from when he announced he was going to do something. And Tesla stock is down 46% in that time. Facebook stock was down 64% in a, a year's period recently. Okay, where are you going to even start? And Mark Zuckerberg runs just one company. There is no evidence offered. I mean, they do raise a concern about the human and labor rights of the company, but there's not one shred of evidence offered that. To be fair, in all due respect, okay, to be fair. Uh, Zuckerberg runs three of the biggest companies in the world. He runs Facebook, he runs Instagram, he runs WhatsApp. If those three were all three separate companies, those would be three of the largest companies literally in the world. So he technically runs one company that's a meta, but technically there's three insanely huge, uh, most powerful companies in the world, literally in the world that he all runs. He was distracted on this day by t Twitter, and therefore this happened over here. I mean, all big NASDAQ stocks that were the highest flyers, like Tesla was, had a big tumble. So if you don't like it, sell it. But are you saying that you really think Tesla would be better without Elon Musk, they want to get rid of board members that are allies of Elon Musk. This, this is this guy's company. It would exist without him. How dare they do this? Well, Dr. Hull, I mean, to Dennis's, Dennis, yeah, Dennis's point, I mean, the stock is, I think, made 27,000% or whatever since going public. I know it's down by 50% since the highs, but I mean, you got to be happy with the money. Ultimately, I don't know when you got in it, but if you got in it near the beginning, you're rich. Er. Um, there's some point to be said if you were in this, you know, 2012, you've made, uh, you know, a lifetime of results and that's fine. And yet we're here for continued innovation. We're here for continued execution on the job. And we're not seeing that. And again, Tesla was 
before and yet so many of the competitors are here now um, and they're going to need to answer to that and we need a ceo well, that's focused on this job brian why should 17 investor groups who know nothing about running any of the five companies that elon musk controls why should they have any voice at all when they own two one thousandths of one percent of tesla shares well, why shouldn't they, they, they no be they, well, no, dennis, dennis, like dennis they, why shouldn't they be listen a guy that controlled like less than a percent of exxon mobil right at the at the fire engine number one was able to push through certain things the size and you know what the size of the listen the board can listen to dr hall and her group or not that's their prerogative but but look look at the groups that are doing this amalgamated bank it calls itself a socially responsible bank and and you, you've got it supports criminal justice immigrant rights you've got the new york city comptroller's office you've got the socially responsible investment coalition which is unions you've got a group called share it was founded as the bc federation of labor in canada Brian Sullivan, you know as well as I do that this is not at all about the value in Tesla stock. If their pension funds or whatever it is are worried about it, sell it and put it somewhere else that's better. The fact that... You okay, so one part I disagree with him, one part I agree with him, okay? First off, I don't put down a shareholder base just because they're a smaller shareholder because then you could say that about every retail shareholder. It doesn't matter what you think. Nothing matters, you know. Uh, you only own, you know... 0.000001% of this company. Like, who cares what you think? I don't think that's the right way of looking at it, okay? But also, I agree with him that I think some of these folks come with different motives. And they disguise it as this or that, right? Uh, but really, there's something else going on there. The fact that she just said Tesla's uh, not innovating is, like, like I, it's such a ridiculous statement. I can't even, like, it's not even worth me responding to that. It's such a low... Oh, such a low, ridiculous statement that it's like not even worth responding to. It's like saying, I don't know, Michael Jordan's not good at basketball. It's like, at that point, it's like, we're not even going to debate about this, man. You could think that you're going to spend all of your time yeah. as a group of this tiny of a voice to try to advocate for this. It's just, it's for your own group and your is own agenda. The, Dr. Hull, is this more of sort of a so, social type thing or a rage at the stock type thing? This isn't a social type thing, and it's not a rage at the stop type thing either. This is about simple governance. Um, there are some issues that are pretty significant um, that the board does need to handle, and it's coming from the top, right? So Tesla is currently being sued by the state of California for racial discrimination. That is something that can be preempted. They need policies and practices in place. Um, but this is when we're talking about innovation because they're going to need to attract, retain, and promote top talent. And with um, social issues going on in the company like this, they're not going to be able to do well, that. Well, Dr. Hall, you got it, but you got to imagine a company Tesla size, every major company is going to have some social issues. I, I'm just guessing it's going to have issues. We're hiding behind forced arbitration. Many of the um, big companies are moving away from that because it does hide any incidents of sexual harassment or racial discrimination from investors um, and from managers within the firm. So they do have some antiquated policies that do need to be improved, and we'd like to see the board step up. Quick final word, Dennis. Brian? You know how the game works. Quick. When I say quick, I mean quick. Sure. The fact is, this is nothing more than an attempt to silence Elon Musk because these groups liberal labor union groups and the media don't like what he's saying and the media hate him for buying twitter Bye. which was their platform Ooh, okay so juicy and and i gotta say that guy you know as i kind of ticked on i was kind of like i could see where this is going and i could see that that kind of makes sense and the more i heard her talk i'll be honest the more i started to think oh boy okay i think there is something more uh to this than complaining about the stock price clearly there seems like there's whether they say it or not, it seems like there's other agendas there that go way past, um, you know, Tesla stock price. Let's just call it that. And, you know, Tesla's one of the biggest companies in the world. They're always going to be filed. There's always going to be, like, lawsuits and this and that. Like, it's one of the biggest companies in the world. That will always be like that for any of the biggest companies in the world. You know how many crap – like, the biggest companies in the world, they have – 
literally massive groups of lawyers on payroll. On payroll, they're internal lawyers, okay? Like, it's ridiculous. Then they also have outside consulting lawyers that are outside the company if they ever need help on this. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, you know how many, you know how many lawyers are on payroll at Apple? Do you have any conception or clue of that? <laughs> like, th those sorts of companies, you always in so much crap. So many legal proceedings. Like, go through their annual reports or 10Ks, and you'll see about so many le legal proceedings. Those are just the ones they choose to show us. I'm sure there's a lot more than that that's going on. Like, are you kidding me? It's absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah. We'll see about all that situation. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion in the comments section. As always, I appreciate y'all joining me. Thank you so much for being subscribed here. If you're looking to join us in the Patreon, see all the moves I'm always up to, make sure you get in there ASAP as uh, that tier will be going away very shortly here. But if you're in it, you'll be grandfathered in there. Appreciate everybody. Much love as always, and have a great day.